Lord, I give you praise. I worship you. Be thou glorified in Jesus' mighty name. The psalmist said, I was glad when they said, let us go into the house of the Lord. The question I ask is, why was he glad? What is it that David knew that he was running to the house of God? What did David know? Why was he glad? This morning we're going to do, a, I call it a prayer of alignment, realignment. Why am I here? Psalm 27 and verse 4. Can we pull up Psalm 27 and verse 4? David said, this one thing I have sought after. Psalm 27 verse 4. One thing I have desired that I will seek thee that I may dwell in your house all the days of my life to behold the beauty. Some, some NIV says to gaze upon you. That is why he wanted to be in the house of you. He said one day in your house is better than a thousand elsewhere. So just go ahead and align yourself. Why am I here this morning? Have I come to behold him? Have I come to gaze at his beauty? Have I come for him to pour into me? Have I come for him to fill me? Have I come for him to heal me? What is your reason this morning for coming before the God of all flesh? In Psalm 63 and verse 2, Psalm 63 verse 2, it said, I want to behold your power and your glory as I have seen in the sanctuary. David has seen something and he wants to always be in, in the presence of God. 63 and verse 2. That I might behold your power. I might behold your glory. Why am I here this morning? I could be anywhere. Why did I show up in Zion this morning? Bring that to him. Tell him, I am here that you might pour into me. I am here that you might touch me. I am here that you might heal me. I am here that you might transform me. I am here that you might do something to me. But by all means, there is a reason I am here. I have come to meet you face to face. I have come before you, oh God. This is my expectation. This is why I am here. I am here to pour out worship to you. I am here to see your power. I am here to see you. Bring that bring before him your expectation. That thing that brings you to church every Sunday, every Friday. That thing that drives you to his presence. Tell him, tell him he wants to hear. He wants to hear it. Let your voices be heard this morning. Maka pariande ke le makaya kata she baba ka ye gede gede rekoto ko yoko do embreke ye kete kete. Only you can satisfy me. Masheka paria kate reka makoya te magaya gada gada rekoto ko yoko do. Only you can fill me with praises. Maka parianda. Only you can fill me with joy unspeakable. Maka kaya te. Ke pranto kuya de she bagaya dada rege de 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 magaya gaya gada gada embrege de 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 le kapaya nte ya te rekodo kodo e bagaya da ya gade e gaba ba ya gada gada embre de 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 we want to see you we want to behold you we want to gaze upon your beauty makapaya te ya te embre kaliya koto she ke bre de 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 e prato 
Koyate, one day, one day in your courts, one day in your house, Ke Prata Limakate, it's better than a thousand outside, it's better than a thousand days outside, Mashaga da 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 da, Regedegedegede, Ekapayate, in Jesus' name we have prayed. We're going to ask for the entrance of his word this morning. Let light be, let light come. In Matthew chapter 4 and verse 15, Matthew chapter 4 and verse 15, something right there um, that I found interesting. It says, The land of Zebulon, the land of Naphtali, by the way of the sea, beyond the Jordan, Galilee of the Gentiles, verse 16. It says, The people who sat in darkness have seen a great light. And upon those who sat in the region of the shadow of death, and I because it darkness, light has dawned. Light has come. Bible says the entrance of your word gives light. We're going to ask for light to come this morning. Lord, let your light come. Let, let light dawn. Let light spring forth in the darkness of my heart, in the doubts in my heart. Let light come. Let light come. Let your light come this morning. Prayers in Jesus' name. Lord, we ask for your light. We ask for your light in our lives this morning. Let light spring forth this morning. Let light spring forth this morning. Every darkness, every darkness, let your light come. Let your light come to grant illumination. To grant illumination. Let your light come. Let your light come to transform me once and again to transform me once and again we go from strength to strength we go from strength to strength as men that appear before the Lord in Zion let light come let light come this morning let light spring forth this morning. Let light spring forth this morning. Mabria Katiate, Egebagaya Gade, Reke de Dede, Shabaya Tete, Reko Paliakate, Makayagade. Let there be a deposit, a deposit of you in me today. Reka Palikata, Emakashade Yagade, Reke de Dede. Let it be known that. I spend time with God today. Let it be evident that I spend time with God today. You cause your glory to pass ahead of Moses. And when he came down, his face was lightened. A great light, a great light. Even by your word, even by your word, let light come. Even by your word, let light come this morning. He sent his word. It was like fire in my bones. Mare kapasha. Let there be a transformation. As we behold with unveiled faces. With unveiled faces. Beholding the glory of God. Beholding that image. We are transformed from glory to glory. Let it not be said that God was here and I did not benefit. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Everlasting Father, King of glory, we thank you for the privilege to be called your own. We hand this service over to you. We ask, O oh God, that let there be a performance. Let there be a performance of your power. Let there be a performance of your splendor. No man can do anything of their own. Sweet Holy Spirit, come and take control. Come and take control of this whole service. We hand it over to you. We yield completely, absolutely, and utterly to you. That only your will be done. 
as it is in heaven, let it be here in Dominion City, Dallas. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Somebody give Jesus praise. Just lift up your hands and begin to worship God this morning. Father, we thank you. We've just come to say how much you mean to us. Let your name be exalted, Jesus. We've come to lift up your name, oh God. Father, we ask that you receive our praise this morning. The highest Hosanna 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 in the highest Sing, Lord, we lift up your name Just jam our hands together for the like that. Hey. Hallelujah. Say, have you heard what the Lord has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given me victory. That's why we say, oh, say yes. Say, oh, say yes. Say yeah. yeah, shoot on we know. Say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, say yeah, shoot on we know. Let's go, everybody, let's go. Our hands, one, two, to the king of kings, to the lord of lords. Hands to the back. Hey. One more time. Have you heard what my God has done? He has destroyed the works of Satan. He has given me victory. That's why I say, Oh, say yes. Say, Oh, say yes. Oh, say yeah. Oh, say yeah. 
generations after generations. We're praising you, but no one sums you up. Generations, hey. generations after generations keep praising you, oh God. You. Yeah, hey. yeah, no one stops you all. Then I ask the Lord, then I ask the Lord, what may be to you? And he said, and he said, yeah, let's sing generations one more time.
Put it on your head. 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 your praise. You are worthy of our praise. Truly there is no, no one is like you, O oh God. You are beautiful beyond description. You are too marvelous for words. Who is like unto thee? Who is like unto thee? We have looked and we have said, there's no one like you. And so we give you all the glory this morning. Just lift up your hands wherever you are and just begin to give God praise. Worship him with your own words. We give you glory, Lord. As we worship you, we give you glory, Lord. As we are you, you are wonderful. You are worthy, O Lord. You are. Sure. 
gracious. Ooh. You are worthy. You are merciful, oh God. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. Oh, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. You are wonderful. Oh, you are wonderful. You are wonderful. You are worthy. Oh, Lord. King of kings.
Sing that song like you want to this morning.
glorious in your ways. You are glorious, so glorious in your ways. Come on, sing it if you believe it. You are glorious, so glorious. your name alone be glorified for you are the king of kings you are the lord of lords there's none like you and there'll never be anyone like you for your mighty works in our lives for your great performances in our lives lord you're glorious you are mighty thank you heavenly father thank you jesus Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Praise the Lord. Praise the mighty name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Please be seated, church. Good morning and happy Sunday. At this point is our testimony time. It's the time for us to give God the glory for the things that he has done, the things that he's yet to do, and the mighty works in our lives. And at this point, I'd like to invite our sister, Sister Jika. She has a testimony to share with us. Please give her a round of applause as she walks up here. Good morning, church servants. Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, family. I am so excited because God is faithful and he is merciful. Um, I know I've shared this testimony before on the platform, um, but I wanted to say it in person. Um, that should be two weeks ago. Um, I don't know how many of us were in that morning prayer. And uh, the funny aspect of it, this is the part I didn't say. <laughs> the morning prayer was going on, and at the point, I knew I slept off. That's the part I didn't say. And then, five minutes, um, not even up to five minutes, before pastor started making that declaration, I felt like someone woke me up, and I'm like, oh, my God, I was praying, and I slept off. And then Pastor 
started declaring and he kept saying it. He said, I declare and I proclaim safety on our people. Everyone is going to be safe. He kept saying it over and over and over again. And I believe that it was God that caused me to wake up to hear that. So after morning prayers, I was um, going to work. They sent me to a store where I have to drive for an hour, seven minutes to get there. And funny enough, before, we, uh, before I left that morning, somehow that word came to my mind again. You know, and then I'm like, ah, pastor has declared safety over the people. And God prompted him to prophesy safety over us. You know, the Bible said that he fulfills the prophecy of his servants. So I spoke that over my life. I said, God, you've declared safety over us. I know I'm going to drive to this work and come back safely. I was driving to work, I think 40 minutes along the way. For some reasons, I don't know how to explain it. This truck, very, this long, very, very long truck, all of a sudden, I probably the man was sleeping. He just entered my lane immediately. And the only thing that came to my mind was apply your brakes. So I, and I, the person behind me too, fortunately saw that because the person was following me closely. So the person was applying his brakes. I was, you know how you're applying your brake to the point that you're almost stopping. So I believe it was God because the truck was so close to me. And you know the trailers can be very long. I don't know how God saved me because even if the front didn't hit me, the back was supposed to. But I don't know how it happened. I don't know what happened. All I know that was that the truck was in front of me. And I want to give God praise, the one that keeps his own. You know, his messes are consistently speaking over our lives. We, are, we drive every day. I see accidents on the way every day. I've been in a couple of accidents myself. It's not about, you know, um, how well you drive and all that. But it's him that is consistently showing us mercy. And I want to give God praise for that. Amen. I want to thank God for his deliverance on that day because it would have been another story. Amen. And um, the second testimony, which has been so, you know, um, strong um, to share. And why I'm sharing this is because I believe there is power in the name of Jesus in the house this morning to save. Amen. Um, for years... For years, um, I suffered depression. I know a lot of people might not really know it. Some people knew it. It was really very bad. It was really, really, really bad. Um, but I want to thank God for his deliverance. I remember stepping into church the day that I, I knew that thing lifted. And he lifted and, you know, sometimes I go to work and they're asking me, I think there was someone else in church the other day that was telling me, why are you behaving like you're drunk? You know, but I, it's, it's, there's something God delivered me and didn't just deliver me from that depression. He put his joy and his peace. It's so overwhelming. I don't know how to explain it. He puts his joy, you know, his joy is so overwhelming in my heart that I can't even, you know, I, it's more like you can't keep it in. I want to thank God for his deliverance. I want to thank him because the truth is, you know, one thing that he said to me the day that I knew I was delivered, he gave me two, two, or two words. There's a scripture he's been telling me all this while, but it made sense to me that day. He said, he that sends his son to deliver us from sin. He said, how much more? He said, while we were still sinners, he sent his son to die for us. He said, how much more shall I not give you all things? Shall I not do all things for you? And the second thing he told me was, he said, the thoughts I have for you are thoughts of good and not of evil and to give us a future and a hope, an expected end. And uh, since then, I think it was sometime in the retreat, 
he locked his joy and his peace in my heart. And I want to give him all the glory and all honor and all adoration. And I want to talk to someone. If you're going through that, like he comes and goes and all that, I want you to understand that Jesus is able to deliver. That's why he paid. That's what we're celebrating this week. He paid the price on the cross and he set captivity free. He set all the captives free. So whether you're sick, whatever it is, depression, whatever it is, Jesus is in the house to set us free. All you have to do is just believe. Amen. I want to give him all the glory and I return all glory back to him that delivers us from all destruction. The one that makes a way where there seems to be no way. The one that makes all things work, work out for our good. I give him all the praise this morning in Jesus name. Of the sun to the setting of the same old Your name is to be humble. Can we be on our feet? From the rising of the sun to the setting. Setting on the same. Your name is to be hallowed. Oh, it is our God is in the house from the rising of the sun to the setting. Setting on the same. Your name is to be shot him up but he refused he kept going louder he kept going louder he kept screaming he kept screaming he kept screaming but in the end he got what he wanted but in the end he got what he wanted what was the propelling thing it was his faith that Jesus could heal him could restore his sight your neighbor
26. The Bible says, For if the Spirit that raised Jesus from the dead shall dwell in you, then it will quicken your mortal bodies. It will quicken your mortal bodies. Go ahead and pray in the Spirit. The Holy Spirit, the healing power of God is in the house. He is a healer. He is the healer. Sanderete, terete, retekete, raparakate, esebete koto paranante, esate la parus, esepreketo rapakata, shada kabale kete bele keto, shamina kubele kete keta, rana mano sebele, sebele de bele keta, kani amana malayata. The merciful one is in the house. The merciful one is in the house. He is in the house showing mercy unto men. He kubrende sebele. If anyone is sick in the house, place your hands on wherever is aching you. So Shabada Balakata. The healer is in the house. 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 Ora sekete beleke, raba baba la rola kapa, rade rada de la, rada de de bele bekete, sameni a bekete lepa, raba baba la bokoto, samina de la. He took your place, he took your place, he took your place, he took your place. Oh, bale bekete de bekete, ta beleke. Galatians three thirteen says, he says, what Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law, the law says that if we sin, we will die. The law says that. If we break the protocols of good health, uh, we will fall sick. Uh, for his messes in the house, uh, to pull men up, uh, to heal men, and uh, this, for so many mercy uh, that the blessings of Abraham uh, might come upon you and I. Hey, celebrate, celebrate, so my love, my love, my love, that is healing, uh, that includes healing. Uh, yes, uh, yes, uh, Maria, uh, by the power in the name of Jesus, uh, we invite by the power in the name of Jesus. Sweet of infirmities uh, over the lives of men uh, in this place uh, in the name of Jesus. Out of my belly. Shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Adosa palata, out of my belly. Shall flow rivers, rivers of living waters. Out of my belly, out of my belly, out of my belly, shall flow, shall flow hey. rivers, 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 rivers of living water. Oh, oh, oh. hey. Out of my belly, yeah. out of my belly.
chapter 7 verse 37 says on the last day of the great feast Jesus stood and cried out saying if anyone thirsts let him come to me and drink he who believes in me as the scripture says out of his heart will flow the rivers of living water if anyone is thirsty this morning if anyone is hungry for the touch of God, if anyone is thirsty to hear from him, the Bible says that out of our belly shall flow for the rivers of living water. Go ahead and tell him how hungry you are this morning, how thirsty you are to, for him to fill you. For the Bible says that out of our belly, out of our belly, the abundance of our hearts shall flow rivers of living water. But you have to drain your channel this morning for him to fill you up you have to fill yourself you have to make yourself available for him to fill you up he cannot fill somebody that's already filled come to him this morning drain your channel let all the channels be drained for the rivers to flow the rivers are blessed for out of our belly shall flow out of our belly shall flow oh let it flow this morning let it flow, let it flow this morning, Kaliasa. Libado Sadada Sede Kadada. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Let it flow, let it flow. Oh, let it flow. your anointing flow. The presence of God is here this morning. Let him fill you up. The presence of God is here this morning. Let him fill you up. Let it flow this morning. Let it flow. 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 Let your healing power flow. Let my door shed again. Let the anointing for breakthrough. Let it flow. 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 It begins to bring every that into life. It's the life giving river. It's the life giving river. It's the life giving river. Let it flow out here right now. It's the river Thank you, Jesus. It begins to bring every that into life. Everything that is dead. Everything that is dormant, everything that is laying idle, oh, he's bringing it to life this morning. He's bringing it to life. Lord, we thank you for your presence in this place. We give you praise, O oh God, King of glory, for what you have gone ahead to do this morning, O oh God. Thank you, Abba Father, for filling our hearts, O oh God. Thank you, Abba Father, for healing our body, O oh God. Thank you, Abba Father, for transforming our minds, O oh God. Thank you, Abba Father, O oh God, King of glory, for selling up, setting the oppressed free in the name of Jesus, O oh God. We give you praise, O oh God, King of glory, O oh God. Oh, thank you, Abba Father, for your presence, O oh God. Thank you, Abba Father. We give you praise, O oh God. I yield myself, O oh God. I surrender to your will this morning, O oh God. Lord, I am but a vessel, O oh God, King of glory, God. Holy Spirit, I ask that you help me, O oh God. Communicate your word, O oh God. Communicate the word that in due season, O oh God, for your people to hear this morning, O oh God. Oh, let your word come speedily, O oh God. Lord, O oh God, let the candlestick of our understanding be activated in our heart this morning, O oh God, to receive your word, O oh God, in the name of Jesus. Jesus, oh God. Thank you, Abba Father. We give you praise, oh God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you continue to take all control of this service, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Praise God. You may be seated, but before that, you can turn to someone beside you. Everybody looks beautiful and amazing this morning. Hallelujah. Amen. I see you're turning and you're not saying anything. Hey, Mr. Stewart, how are you? Amen, amen. God bless you. Um, good to be in the, in the presence of God this morning. I bring you greetings from Pastor Chile. Amen, 
Amen. Um, it is an honor to stand in this place. Amen. Um, we all know to, um, next week is uh, um, the believers or Christians, they celebrate Easter. And also today is known as uh, Palm Sunday. And uh, probably globally, everybody celebrates today, the week before Easter. You know, it is in history, the Sunday that Jesus triumphantly rode on the donkey into Jerusalem. And you know what is amazing is that he did that knowing that he was going to lay his life. But, you know, he did it anyway. Because why? He's committed to the cause of what he was sent to do. So it was, it was as if it was his red carpet to his death. You know, he rode, you know, the, the ceremony and the everything that led to that. It didn't, it didn't, it didn't let us know it was something about somebody that's going to death. Who, who rode on the red carpet before they are dead? But he did that because he's committed to the cause. Because there's a commitment of us being reconciled to him. And also, you know, we were made to understand, you know, during this week, are we going to be celebrating everything about his trial, his uh, crucifixion, and uh, ultimately the resurrection, which, you know, we talked about this morning. You know, that's the, the reason why you and I, you know, have a relationship with the Father. There's a price that he came to pay. And then God, Jesus, you know, why on earth he did everything to make sure that nothing Nothing stopped that um, uh, mandate from happening. And, and to me, that is the greatest commitment. And I'm going to be talking to us this morning about commitment, commitment to God. You know, um, a very renowned uh, evangelist that we know um, so much, he has gone to be with the Lord. You know, he always say, and whenever he is in the crusade trying to, you know, to win so, he always said, you know, ask the question, the three questions that he always asks. He said, do you live for Christ daily? And is Christ first in your life and he always he would say is he the lord and the savior of your life do you live for christ daily the reason why jesus came do you live the things that we do do you live for christ daily and is he first in your life and he's the lord and savior as well and the reason being that we are made to understand you know that we must come to him, Christ, as our Lord and Savior. Like it says in Romans chapter 10, verse 19, verse 9. If you openly declare Jesus as your Lord and believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead, that you will be saved. You know, and the, the journey of commitment, you know, like he says in the, in the Romans chapter 10, verse 9. You have to believe and you have to publicly declare. So the first of all, the first thing there is repentance. You know, when you confess Jesus, you know, confess, you confess with your mouth and declare you are repenting of your sin because, you know, we, we you know, so someone that wants to give their life to Christ is someone that, you know, um, considered, in quote, a sinner. So we, we make a public declaration of repentance. Then after that, and following that, uh, can I have the Romans chapter 10, verse 9? By faith, we receive him. If you openly declare Jesus and believe. So the belief in there, and I think in another translation, say faith. Believe in your heart that Jesus raised him from the dead. You shall be saved. So you believe in your heart. So by faith, you receive him. Now you believe. You know, that's us believing, but we have not seen. And I'll use the instance. Um, let's take, for instance, for this mic that I'm holding. This is not the first time I'm holding a mic. But, you know, before the mic came here, the microphone um, came here, I believe that media team had faith in the microphone company that made this, that it will amplify my voice, that it will, you know, project my voice. They have faith in the company and they bought the microphone. And I had a faith when I went in there and picked up the microphone, I have faith in the media team that when I turn it on, that it's going to work, that's faith. I didn't go there before I turned it off. I asked them, is the mic going to work? If I turn it on, will it speak? Will the people hear my voice? Will it carry me to the end of the service? But I have faith in the finished product. I have faith that our, our, the media team that went and bought this microphone, that they have faith in the company, that it will work. So when I went and picked it, 
is as good as the, I believe in the work they have put in that it will work. The same way the work that Jesus went, we believe because we don't we don't see when we when we when we give our lives to Christ when we 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 we'll, we'll confess we believe in our heart and there comes the walk. So the the third thing is us obeying Him, obeying Him. If your faith is similar to you know, faith in Jesus, it is our commitment to our salvation. The third thing, obeying Him, we must be willing to obey Him. We must be willing to obey Him. Amen. Um, in Matthew chapter sixteen verse twenty four. You know, he says, can we, can we pull that up? Because, excuse me, this is the, where the work is, and this is the work of, where the work of commitment starts for every, every one of us. And Jesus said to his disciples, if any one of you wants to be my follower, you must first give up your own way, take up your cross, and follow me. So, there are requirements there for us to obey. There are commitments that is required of us to fulfill, to be able to walk. Because, you know, when we, we don't give our life to Christ, oh, I said a prayer, and I believe, and we just go and sit down and waiting for when Jesus will come. Amen. You know, it, <laughs> that reminds me of a story. Um, that's very important when you teach your kids how to say the prayer. You make sure that you explain to them. So I remember um, Delphi when she was little. You know how you say you you want to see Jesus. You want to go to heaven. You say the Lord's prayer and you get to heaven. So I remember that I was pregnant with Rena and I was driving the highway and she was sitting in the back. She said, "Mommy, it didn't work." I said, "What didn't work? It didn't work." I said the prayer it didn't work. I didn't go to heaven. I said, "Okay." I, <laughs> I remember vividly where I was driving in the highway, you know, like the things that kids say that made you apply the brake, and then you say she didn't work because she wanted to go to the heaven. That's why she said the prayer, because the teacher said, if you say the, the prayer, you know, God will hear you, and you go to heaven. She, think, she thought it was an instant going to heaven, and then she was waiting for it to happen, and she, it, didn't, it didn't happen, so I had to explain to her, say, okay. I know you're gonna, we're going to go to get to heaven at some point, but right now, you know, there's some walking that needs to be done for you to be able to get to heaven. So this is the third part. I guess she stopped at the second part. She believed she wanted to translate, you know, without getting to the third part, the third part that we obey. There are things that are requirement, that are commitment that we, first of all, he said, if you want to be my followers, you know, disciple, you know, um, However you want to put it, that he's talking about all of us. We must give up our own way. Take up your cross and follow me. You know, but when we looked at the account of what Jesus went through, he suffered so much persecution just to be able to come to the path that we are. Somebody would say, oh, what is Jesus? You know, I mean, he can't compare me, but he's our model. He's our model. He's the only example that God gave us. You know, some people face similar things. Some people face less, lesser things. Some people face even worse things for the sake of the gospel. But he said, you must take up your own cross. There are going to be, there are going to be persecution. There might not be, but what if they are? Because we are like, you know, sheep among wolves. So be prepared, you know, about this. But we have to take commitment for us to take up our cross and follow him. You know, Jesus went all this, all did, all did all these things for our sake. And he expects us expect to do similar thing. And, you know, also, that's why, you know, when, you know, the scripture that says, can, can, can't your cause, you know, be, because when we give our lives to Christ, not just saying, you know, for just to, to let it be that is it make you be, it be scary at all. But then when it, when it has to do with the message of us giving the, our life to Christ, it's a serious business and it requires serious commitment from us. Praise God. You know, there might be some of us here might say, oh, well, I repented, I believe by faith. But the obedient part of us making commitment, that's why most of us, that's why we have issues. Because, you know, sometimes we are willing, we are willing, but, you know, there are things pulling us. There are obstacles, there are cares of this, there are families, there are other things that are pulling us. But Jesus says also that we must, you know, take up our cross. 
you know, deny self. I think an, um, another translation said, deny self, you know, take up our cross and follow him. Let's look at um, Luke chapter 9, verse 57. Luke chapter 9, verse 57. NLT, please, stay with NLT, please. Yeah. As they were walking along, someone said to Jesus, I will follow you wherever you go. But Jesus replied, Foxes have dens to leave, and the birds have nests, but the Son of Man has no place even to lay his head. He said to another, Come, follow me. The man agreed, but he said, Lord, first let me return home and bury my father. But Jesus said, Let the spiritually dead bury their own dead. Your duty is to go and preach about the kingdom of God. Amen. So Jesus is at, you know, the ones that even say, let me do this, let me do that. But, you know, to him, the priority is putting God first. You remember what the question says, is God first in your life? You know, that things will come up. Things will come up that will, you know, fight our commitment, that will be an obstacle to where we are going. But if Jesus can say, oh, even leave. Don't, don't even uh, um, bury your father. The dead will bury their father, you know. But the commitment is to put him first, put the kingdom of God first. And let's see in, in that um, chapter also, verse 23, can we look at it in an Amplified Classic, please? Because if somebody will say, oh, it's, it's not just the disciples in verse 23 of the same chapter 9. Amplified Classic, please. And he said to all, all, all means all. If any person wills to come after me, let him deny himself. That means you're going to disown yourself, forget, lose sight of himself and his own interests. Refuse and give up himself and take up his cross, cross daily and follow me. Cleave steadfastly to me. Conform wholly to my example in living and if need be in dying also. That's a lot. But that's what he requires of us. Actually, I mean, an amplified classic, he amplifies it, but then it just is the same thing that we read, it just amplifying it, you know, breaking it down. How we, so, you know, we, we, we because I think one of the biggest things that, you know, ch our challenge to this Christian race, to, to our commitment is self. Self. That's why he says, you know, you have to. You have to disown, disown, forget, lose sight, lose sight of any interest, anything that comes in between it. So before you can even think about yourself, it has to be that the kingdom of God, your commitment with God, your personal commitment with, 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 with God, a personal commitment with the kingdom agenda is priority and is straight before you can, you can, you can think about yourself. So... And also, too, if, um, if, if I can read that 23 in um, ERV, please. I don't know if you have the ERV. Jesus continued to say to all of them, any one of you who wants to be my follower must stop thinking about yourself. Stop thinking about yourself. It's easier, you know, when you say stop thinking about yourself. Okay, yeah. But when you, it's not literally meaning stop thinking about yourself. That means when you want to do something and then it is all about you, when you want to, the, the, the kingdom agenda comes forward, or when it's pulling you to spend time with God, spend time in fellowship, spend time to study. But how is self, self getting in the way? Stop thinking about yourself and watch you want. That's the, that sounds like every one of us. Stop thinking about yourself and what you want. You must be willing to carry the cross that is given to you every day for following me. So it's a daily requirement for every one of us. We stop thinking about ourselves before we wake up in the morning, before you even grab your phone, before you even look to see, you know, who has texted me, what is going on in the social media platform, or did I miss any call? God, give him first. You, you spend time with him. You listen to him. You study his word and let him instruct you. Let him speak to you before you can even think about. It's so funny. My, one of my mentors, he said that some people before they even, before when they wake up, before they even check to see if their, their legs are still there, they already grab their phone. 
<laughs> Before they can even think to say, oh, can am I be able to get up, get up the bed? But they already have their phone. So self, those things that you know, for everyone is different. For everyone, there are some things. For, for me, it might not be phone. For someone, it might be phone. For, for someone else, it might be, it might be, it, there are different things. You know yourself. You know yourself. You know what get in your way of you being, uh, fulfilling that commitment, that call of God upon your life. Amen. Commitment requires us to find time for God. Finding time for God. Finding time for God. The reason why we don't have time is because God is not first in our life. You know, if we make him first, we have to make time. You can't tell me that you love me and you don't have time for me. You can't, then you don't love me. You're just saying it for saying sake. You're just saying it to, 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 for someone else to think that you don't. Because the love that we speak is in the action. If you tell me that you love me, and every time I call you, or you give me one excuse or that you can't spend time with me, then I'm not first in your life. I'm not your first love. So for, for us to be able to make a full commitment, we have to make time for him because he comes first and we have to put him first in our life. Amen. So, and that, you know, and it comes with uh, us having a relationship with him. Our commitment to him has to come priority. Our commitment with him is number one priority in our life. So, and I, I was listening to um, uh, a message and the, and the preacher says, and he said that is, is God relationally prioritized in your life? Or is he programmatically, um, um, what, how did he put it? Um, programmatically, uh, like, you know, you, you plan something, it's not a priority. But at the last minute, you run out of time. Then it becomes your, oh, well, let's finish this one. You program it, but it's not your priority. You come, the list of things to do. I have two hours to spend today. I have made the list of the things. I have 15 minutes left. And I said, what can I fit in the 15 minutes? Oh, prayer. That wasn't your priority. Because if you had thought about every other thing, prayer will not come at the 15 minutes left. It will not come. Because that was what you did was programmably included it in there. It was not priority for you. For for every one of us, God has to be relationally prioritized, not programmably included in the event that we do. Because it doesn't have to come when everything is said, oh, I will do this on my day off. I will do this when I'm well rested. You know, there's one thing I, be, I began to do, and uh, one of our, um, uh, our preacher friend I like so much, he said, whenever your mind tells you to do something that gets in the way of commitment, do the opposite. Whenever your mind tells you, you know, when he's, oh, you want to pray, oh, but let me sleep. When I wake up, I'll pray. No, whenever man is telling you to sleep, time to pray. And, you know, apply it to so many other things. You will find, and it's amazing how it works. It's amazing. Because I'm telling you because, you know, I'm telling you from what I've already known. When your mind is telling, because it's the devil that's coming to, oh, you know, you know, you know, you can you just, hey, don't you have a day coming up tomorrow? Oh, you have this exam, finish this exam tomorrow. You find out by tomorrow comes, you even forget that you said it, that it was going to be tomorrow. So while is day? Why you have the time? Prioritize. It, did, did the Bible says that we seek the kingdom of God first and every other thing. But most times what we do, we seek every other thing. We seek every other thing and the kingdom of God. We put it second. And that one of the things that affect our commitment. Our commitment should be equal to our, us being on fire for him. How hard are you for God? What is your commitment like? What is your commitment like? Because the Bible says it can either be hot or cold. It cannot be in between. It cannot be in between. God expects us, our commitment. And then that's why we have the Holy Spirit. Because he didn't promise that it was going to be easy. But do we recognize the person, what the Holy Spirit does in our life? For, for when we, can, we can ask him. Even Jesus, it was tough for him. Even to the point, he said, Lord, if you are willing, please take this cross away from me. 
But he said, nevertheless, because the suffering was so much. Not my will, but your will. And the Holy Spirit was able to minister to him. So when we find, when we're struggling in our commitment, what is the place of Holy Spirit? Is, your whole, is the Holy Spirit active? Are we in relationship? Are we communing with him? Holy Spirit, I need your help. He said his grace is sufficient. He's made his grace available for every one of us. But you ask, you ask him, you know, the Holy Spirit is not going to impose himself on you. God has given us the choice. We have to invite him. We have to invite him into, into our life to make the difference. Amen. Um, let's see um, Luke chapter 14, another reference of um, how God uh, referred commitment. Um, Luke chapter 14, verse 26 to 27. If you want to be my disciple, you must, by comparison, hate everyone else. Your father, your mother, your wife, children, brother, sister. Yes, even your own life. I don't know why the scripture, every scripture that we read, bring into yourself, bring in your own life. Even your own life. Otherwise, you cannot be my disciple. Let's see 27. And if you do not carry your own cross and follow me, you cannot be my disciple. I was just like, oh my. That's like everything I own right in one, one verse. And I was, as I was meditating on this scripture some time ago, the Holy Spirit said, do you know the reason why all these things were mentioned? Because these are the things that people hold dearly in their heart. And these are the things that it's so easy for people to give up. So if you can, you know, if you can get, this about family, it's not saying that you cannot take care of a family. That's not what it's saying. It's saying it's comparison. And I think, you know, um, in, uh, there's another translation that says, it didn't use the word hate, if you did that, you more, that you're going to love God, be, um, love God more than these ones. You got to put God's first. He's taking, telling us about our first love, what we have to be. Because these ones, my kids, my mom, my dad, my parents, my siblings, we hold them daily in our heart and they stand in the way of our commitment. So because sometimes when I look at it and I say, and I say, uh, you know, someone that is, you know, doing so well and then there's a change in status, things begin to go the other way. And I say, are you, are you trying to tell God that he's, he, he gave you something that you can't handle? Isn't it God that knows that he said that, the, that he will not give us anything that we cannot handle. So when you get to that point, of course your life is not going to be the same when you are single than when you're married and when you have kids. But for every step, there, there, there is the grace of God. For every, uh, every advancement that we make in life, there is the grace of God. There is the strength of God. There is that supernatural strength of God. But most times we want to do things in our way. We want to struggle. We want to struggle on our way. And then when we are overwhelmed, we start calling on God. I've come to a point, at, you know, in my life that, you know, I depend on the Holy Spirit totally. I say, is that that you help me or you don't help me? I mean, you, because I know there's no other help that comes from. And I do it, you know, with my whole heart. And I see the help comes the help that I need that it comes. So, because so, so many things that I do in my life, I don't even know how it get accomplished if not for the Holy Spirit. People look at me and say, how do you do it? People look at me and say, how do you do it? You know, for most of you that know that I work night shift, for the past seven years, I've worked, um, what, what the exceptions on the, 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 the times I travel, maybe in the seven, last seven years, like maybe up to five times, I work every single, every other weekend. Every other weekend night, I come to church. And they say, how do you do it? I don't know. I didn't get here one day. There are times of struggle. There are times of struggle. Even if the struggles are still here. But then it's more, less of the struggle. Because I have made a commitment that is not negotiable. That what? If I can make it to work, then I can come to church. That is my commitment. If it has to take me to take 30 minutes of break, but one of my one of my conditions that I won't be the one driving. If I have to take, you know, because you have to make because you he can't just keep giving an excuse and not making things work. You can give the excuse because you know your work is not gonna change. So what is gonna change? Your attitude, your commitment. 
So I made that commitment. Why? But oh, for somebody say, oh, well, you're the pastor's wife. It doesn't matter. When I wasn't, when I was single, I was doing the same. I was used to pack my clothes in my bag when I finish. I go so that I will, because I know what it does for me. Because I did think sometimes when we understand the value of what we're doing, how it affects our life, how it affects the people around us, then we make the commitment and stick to it. So for the things that I have I've come by the help of the Holy Spirit, sometimes I'd like, I'll, I'll even see myself running 24 hours. I was just, okay, I have to take a break here. You know, don't take the Holy Spirit for granted because, you know, he has helped me so much. So, you know, you have to tell yourself, how, ask the Holy Spirit, how can you help me? I need help. But if you keep this coming to the part that, oh, well, he understands, you know, I have to do what I have to do. But it's still excuse. It's affecting your commitment. Amen. You know, and I want to, you know, I've already talked to some things that affect our commitment. Some of the, you know, um, sorry, my allergies. Well, not my allergies, allergies. <laughs> uh, I'm trying not to touch my, my face. Um, we let all these things affect our commitment, but we have to remember that we are in a race. And in a race, commitment is required for us to compete, to participate, to be able to win. Because I don't know anybody that go into a, a race, that want to compete in a race. You don't make the commitment to train. You don't make the commitment, you know. You just, on the day of the race, I don't even know how your name will appear there. They will look at you and say, I mean, let's just see what this joker is going to do. You have to make that commitment to train. You have to make that commitment to participate in the training for you to, even for, you, and that's just to say for you to be in the race. You have not declared the winner. Just for you to be in the race, you have to, you have to train. You know, because I remember those days I used to do track, you know, um, back in, in, the, in the high school, you know, we used to, when others leave school, when, when it's time to go to school, um, um, leave, uh, school is over, we stay behind. We practice. And we, sometimes we have to come to school early before every other person. Why? There is a race coming. Not everybody was in the training just for the people in the race. So the same way that we have to know that commitment to train, how we're training our personal self, how we're training our corporate self. You know, when I'm talking about corporate self, for those of us in the leadership position, we have to be able to train. Because there's a training for you, and there's a training for you, the people that you're leading. Amen. Now we have to be able to, you know, because I think for sometimes we take this granted because it's a heavenly race. You know, we can't see it physically, and we don't know when we're going to run the last lap. But God, you know, wants us in this race. There's a tendency because we don't see it for us to slack in our commitment. The tendency for us to say, oh, well, you know, they've been saying Jesus is coming soon. But when he's going to come, it's unexpected. It's unexpected. So are you going to take that risk of being caught unaware? God forbid. Amen. Um, First Corinthians um, chapter 9, verse 26 you know, it's talking about us, you know, being in the race, you know, because it says that we don't run a race um, that is, we don't know, that our race is not uncertain, and we don't run, you know, we don't, we don't, we don't fight like beating in the air that we, like we don't know, but we, we have focus, we are certain of what we are doing, the race of eternity, and because of that, we discipline our body, because of that, we put our body under subjection, least after preaching to others that we might be cast away least after all said and done that he will hear the part here god forbid so that's why we stay focused commitment our commitment it keeps us focused it keeps us you know in check because there is a race we discipline ourselves we discipline because there's something you want to get just like for us, if we want to lose weight, we discipline ourselves for the things that we want to get. And for the sake of time, I'm going to quickly run down to, you know, the things that are fed us. And I think we talked about family. Another one is association. Our association, you know, the, 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 the group of friends that we keep, the, not, it doesn't have to be friends. The people that you hang out with, the things that you do, it can affect your commitment. Because if, 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 your, if your commitment is go this way and the people that you're following are going that way, 
you know, the tendency is for you to be able to start pushing to the direction of the, you know, people are going. So, you know, check your association. Is, is it that the, the, when you spend time with these people, you come back, you start repenting, you come back and you say, oh, Lord, what have I done today? I haven't achieved anything. You want to go in that association of people that, you know, you know, inspire you, people that, you know, draw you to be who God would want to be, and people that even challenge you to do more concerning things that God has called you to do. Our job, our career, you know, when, we, when we, you're choosing a career, you pray and ask God to give you the one that has time. And also, too, you know, you can make time for yourself. You can have any job, and you can still make time for God. You can make, same, make time for your personal thing. You can make time for the church thing. But it has to be a personal um, decision that you have to make. Amen. And the cares of this world, I mean, is included in everything. Excuses, huh, that's a big one. Excuses, you know, is this, is that. And sometimes we don't even know when we do that. You know, you know, sometimes when people are talking to me, I just like, hold on, stop, listen to yourself. It's excuse, and then when you listen, oh yeah. But you know, you, you have to be careful when you come to the part that you give so much excuse that when anything, anything is how comes about, you wanna, you know, come up with excuse to give. So, but you know, don't let excuse be the things that, you know, come between us. Idols, 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 oh my goodness, I don't have time. Idols, and it can be any of these things, any of the above that I mentioned can be idols in your life. Idol of phone, idol of money, idol of self, idol of social media. You know, what is it that is idol in your life that affecting your commitment to God? Remember, we have to be accountable. We have to be accountable. We have to be accountable, you know, of what we do with our time, with our phone, with our money, with our social media platform, whether you're promoting or watching the ones that are promoting. Amen. And self, I mean, self cannot be overemphasized. You know, there's so much has been said over her. But, you know, I think, you know, most of us, the, the, you know, I was listening to someone. He says, <laughs> That you you will be amazed, amazed not in the you know you know in a good way, the kind of things that become idol in your life that you don't even know. The kind of things you can be that you know like you, you that you can be so engrossed in activity it can even be church activity it can become an idol in your life. But is that what you're doing is not glorify God, is not bringing anything to, you You know, com making your commitment. You're just being there, being here, being here, being everywhere. It can become an idol. And it's preventing you from having a personal relationship or fulfilling your commitment. It can become an idol for you. So don't think, oh, well, I'm here, I'm there, I'm doing this. You know, ask yourself, that, those things that you're doing, what are you doing specifically to fulfill God's purpose on your life for the church, for the kingdom of God? Amen. And when all those things take priority over God's purpose for our life, it becomes, it becomes an obstacle to our commitment. When it takes priority over God's purpose, it becomes an obstacle to our commitment. So you got to check. You got to check yourself. You got to check yourself. You know, Bible says for us to love the world, you know, not to love the world, but the, the, even though, and also the things that it needs, you are not to love it. But, you know, we are passing through. This is a race. You know, we are going somewhere. At the end of the day, you know, we're going to meet our Savior. But then we don't want anything to happen to us. Because it's a race that we are running, we want to look at the long term. You know, maybe we are in, in the race now. That's everything that is going on is short term. But there's somewhere we're going that is long term eternity. So we have to, that should be our focus. The things that we're doing and our commitment. Because every day we hear the word of God, every day there's a prompting, what do we do with it? You know, we need to look at the long term and see these things that get in the way, they are temporal. They are temporal. You know, the, 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 the earthly things, the money, the job, they are temporal. You know, it is an instant gratification, limited and fulfillment. But at the end of the day, I, I I don't I've not heard any anywhere in the Bible it says that you know God is gonna give you a crown for the for the the, the ten um, awards that you got or the ten um, trainings that you got. No, things that have eternal value, the the fact the lives that you affected. How many souls? The lives that you affected, things that have eternal value. All the money that we make. Is it for the purpose of God? 
at when you know when when we're all said and done and we are no longer here, none will be taken over there. But you know what we remember? The things that you did with the money. If it's for the kingdom of God, if it's to the glory of God. So let's, you know, be careful. There is something bigger that is beyond here. And it's the best. There is something bigger. But we have to make that effort to check our commitment. Make sure that our commitment is intact. Make sure that we, our commitment, our, money, our, our personal devotion, our studying of the word, the things that have been trusted in our hand as believers, if you're in the leadership pro, um, position, all of these things, they count. For every one of us, the Bible says that there's a gift and there's a grace that has been given each and every one of us. Each and every one of us. If you don't know that, we it's, maybe it's the time that you begin to ask God, God, what is it? What is the gift that you've given to me? Maybe you can start there to use your gift to make sure that your commitment is, is intact. God has called us to be committed. And his commitment is eternally rewarding. His commitment is eternally rewarding. Let's bow our heads in prayer. And talk to him. Talk to him. You know those things that stand in your way. You know those things that stand in your way. Those things that taint your commitment. Those things that be obstacle to your commitment. Talk to him. Those, one, those, those idols that stand in your way. Those excuses. The things that are not relevant to where your God is calling you. Those friends that are not relevant to where God is taking you. But it's standing in the way of you fulfilling God's purpose for your life. Ask the Holy Spirit to help you. If you want to lay it at the altar, you go ahead and lay it at his feet. He's here, to, he's here this morning. Father, Lord, we give you praise. We give you honor. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. We thank you. Lord, we ask to God that you help us. Holy Spirit, that you help us to God, that you be real in our life, oh God, that every point in time that we'll be able, oh God, to be able to, 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 to reach out to you, to consult you on the things, oh God, that we are going through. That we will not run this race alone, but we will depend on the help of the Holy Spirit. Everything that stands in between us, oh God, everything that be obstacle, oh God, King of glory, to our commitment, to us fully committed to you, O oh God. Lord, we ask, O oh God, King of glory, let there be, O oh God, a, 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 a pulling down, O oh God, King of glory, of every idol, O oh God, of every obstacle, O oh God, of everything that affects our commitment with you. We want to be totally committed to you, O oh God. Holy Spirit, we ask that you help us, O oh God, as we surrender totally to you. We ask for your help, O oh God, today, O oh God, and every day, O oh God, that we will, O oh God, be able to take up our cross and follow you daily, O oh God, not thinking about ourselves or what we want. To God, but about you, oh God, who is the author and the finisher of our faith, oh God, about you who is first in our life, oh God, that we will seek the kingdom of God first, oh God, King of glory, oh God, in everything that we do, not but not just by the words of our mouth, oh God, King of glory, but by our action, oh God, by the things that we do, oh God, let it be a reflection, oh God, King of glory, of your purpose in our life, oh God. We give you praise, oh God, we give you honor, oh God. Blessed be your holy name. We want to hear on that day, well done, thou good and faithful servant to God. This is the Lord, O oh God, our prayer, O oh God. And we yield to your will, O oh God, for that to come to happen in our life. In Jesus' name, amen. amen. Put your hands to Jesus. Put your hands for him. hands together for Jesus one more time. Hallelujah. Amen. Auntie, your neighbor, tell your neighbor your commitment. Talk to, talk to the person next to you. Tell the person your commitment commits God. Your commitment commits God. Amen. The Bible says that God wish, God's wish for us is that we prosper even as our soul prospers. Amen. So as you grow in your commitment to God, God makes it makes it 
his duty to make sure that you're growing in every other aspect of your life. Amen? Put your hands together for Jesus one more time. Hallelujah. So next week's Sunday is going to be our Easter Sunday. It's another good place to clap. Amen? Hallelujah. So um, please make sure that you're here next week Sunday. Um, invite your friends. Amen? Invite your friends. Um, let's, let's celebrate uh, the price that was paid. Amen? Um, next week Sunday, again, make sure you come with someone. Um, do we have any first timers in the house? Amen. Hallelujah. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Um, you're welcome. God bless you. Um, like we always say, you are an answer to the prayer that we prayed. Amen. We are so glad that you're here today. Um, our pastor is not around today, and he would love to meet you. So you have to make sure you're here next week Sunday. <laughs> Amen. Amen. You know, uh, Pastor, we miss you. We know you're watching us. Um, but God bless you. Thank you so much for coming. Um, but just after service, um, just give us a few minutes. Just a few minutes. Um, let's, let's get to know you. Amen. Um, let's give our offerings. Let's pray over our offering. Speak to it. Speak to that seed. Father, we thank you. For out of the many that you have given us, Father, we have come in thanksgiving this morning to you. We ask, O oh Lord, that the blessing of the soul will follow us all the days of our lives. That by the virtue of this seed, O oh God, you will open your heavens over us. And you will cause us to blossom in every area of our lives. In Jesus' mighty name we have prayed. Amen. Um, Tomorrow morning, 5 a.m., we are going to start our week with our prayers. And um, you don't want to miss the morning prayer, 5 a.m., you know. Um, that's how we start the week. We pray for uh, an hour. It's just an hour prayer, and you start your week right. Um, so if you're not part of the WhatsApp group, meet, my, meet me or meet Donald, you know, um, so that we can add you to the WhatsApp group so you can get uh, the notification for the prayer meetings, and then all the connect groups will be meeting as usual this week. Um, we have so many connect groups. Make sure you're part of it. Um, find a connect group. Find a, a, a group to join so that way, you know, we can ask questions and we can grow together and have our Bible studies. Amen. Um, next week, Friday, we're going to be having our plug-in service. It's by 7.30 p.m. Fri Fridays. Uh, we come together here in this um, church and we pray. Um, it's always a very powerful time in the presence of God. And next week, Saturday, we are going to be going out for evangelism. Amen. Put your hands together for Jesus. Amen. Next week, Saturday, I'm not sure what time it is. We are still going to push out the notification on our platforms. But let's come. Let's um give people an opportunity to be part of what we are doing and let's put into action some of the things that we've heard and go and preach the gospel of Jesus and save lives for heaven. Amen? Save lives for God. Amen? Hallelujah. Um, 5 p.m. Um, 5 p.m. on Saturday. Just come down here. We're all going to be together. We'll you know, wear our t-shirts. Make sure you wear your Dominion City t-shirt. If you don't have any, we may have some here for you. You know, come, let's just go out and evangelize. Amen. Um, I think that's it. Let's rise on our feet as we take our affirmation this morning. Amen. Just read, it, read with me this morning. One, two, ready, go. I affirm that I am God's choice. I am wonderfully and fearfully made. I function in God's perfect will and have insight into the realities of the kingdom. Christ is my wisdom. Therefore, I have excellent spirit. I think differently because the word of God has modeled my thinking and given me mindset of the righteous. Divine wisdom is heard in my words and seen in my actions today. 
I am filled with the beauty of the Spirit, and he has granted me the courage and the supernatural ability to be a blessing to my world, manifesting the virtues and perfections of divinity. Hallelujah. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and mercies are follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen.